Now I got parts on the way for a few projects, but in the meantime, I'm gonna update you on something that went completely wrong. Last time you saw this truck, I had just applied the shine juice to it, and it looked fantastic. It looks great. Everyone who's seen it says it looks like a whole new truck now. Uh, now, a feller did warn us that he didn't know how long it would last because he didn't know where we lived. If you live in the desert, I've got the answer for you. It is both too short and too long of a time. Now, the problem started when the wind first kicked up. We're doing a good test of that shine juice with ambient dust. Uh, we got a little bit of wind going here. You can see the windmills just cranking around there. The sky, yeah, I'm pointing directly at the sun, but there's so much dust in the air that it really doesn't matter. It's just kind of a brown haze. Oh yeah, we got whirling dust. Ooh, could taste that one. Gotta remember not to talk when the wind is kicking that stuff up. But uh, yeah, that whole truck's gonna be covered with dust here in a few minutes. And this thing, this wind's supposed to go on till tomorrow, so. It's a typical spring New Mexico day, but we'll see how that looks afterwards. Another day of wind and dust here. Yeah, the sky is still kind of brown. Uh, the truck is definitely getting coated. You can see all the shine is gone. It is just pure dust at this point. You can even see some of the marks where I rubbed it. Um, yeah, dust everywhere. So, uh, we're gonna see what this ambient dust does, and then I'm gonna go and rinse it off and see what happens. Uh, we'll see if it cleans up or if the dust stays. But uh, it's definitely getting a coating. This is what happens when you expose shine juice to the desert. Uh, good sandstorm, and um, you got a sandy truck. That's um. That does not have dirt fall right off it. Um, it seems to just stick to it. So we're gonna try starting off with just straight hosing this off and we'll see what happens. Let's see if we get a better view of that. That's just mud. Well, this is what it looks like when it dry. Um, and that is not an optical illusion. That is just dirt completely embedded into whatever's on the paint now. So uh, I've got to get this off of here, which means I've got to wash this truck again. Now, I don't often wash my vehicles, but when I do, I use Dawn dish detergent because if it's good enough for a duck, it's got to be good enough for a truck. Now I haven't washed a car in years, and now this year alone, it's just started, I've washed this truck twice. So um, this is getting ridiculous. But hopefully I've got the, um, I got the dirt off for sure. Hopefully I got enough of the residue off that it won't get dirt stuck to it again. We're gonna let it dry and see what happens. But while I got the hose out, on my last video, someone commented that I really should clean the interior too. So I'm gonna take care of that right now. Done. It's perfect now. Now even after all that excess washing, it's been a few weeks, all the dust is back. And you can still see the marks in the hood where I actually had rubbed the shine juice on. So I know that's what's doing this. That means I have to wash this truck again. And I get a little more aggressive this time because I need to get this stuff off so it doesn't keep collecting dust. Well, I raided my kitchen again. This time I got the sponge. This is the kind with that um, nylon abrasive backing on it. So we're gonna see what that does, because at this point, I gotta get that off here. So uh, I'm gonna wash it again. Third time's a charm, right? Keep our fingers crossed. Got the wash done, and it's all dried. Found this stuff sitting in a corner uh, in the shop. Hasn't been used for like 15 years. 
There's a reason it hasn't been used in 15 years. I'm not doing that. What we do need to do is get some dust on this. Now it's not supposed to be windy for a couple days, so we're gonna have to create our own dust. But before we do that, there's a little bit of work we gotta do. I don't know if you noticed last time, I didn't drive it very long. There's a reason for that. Um, that right there is the only bolt holding the bed on. Uh, so I really should actually bolt the bed on. Uh, also the suspension. Um, when I got it, the springs were on it, but there's no nuts on most all the suspension bolts. So none of the bolts that held the axles on were actually, you know, attached. So I didn't drive it for very long, but I wanna take care of that because I wanna get some more time on this. Now I've already installed the gas tank and I've run gas lines. Um, they were full of, uh, you guessed it, mud wasps. So everything was clogged. Uh, took a lot of uh, cleaning and running wire through and all that, but that's pretty boring on video. So I did all that off camera. Now hooking up a speedometer, um, the Jeep uses a normal GM style uh, speedometer hookup. The Ford uses its own unique style with an O-ring and a tab. Um, they're not compatible, but luckily this is a common problem. So pretty cheaply I picked up an adapter and uh, this just bolts right into the Ford system and hooks up a GM speedometer. So we're gonna pop that thing in there. Uh, looks like we just have to uh, take the gear off the old one, put it on the new one. It's not exactly that easy. Got the, got the gear switched over, no problem. This tab that holds it on has a really long piece on it. This one on the original one, a lot shorter. Um, I don't know if this came with instructions, and if it did, I didn't read them. So I don't know if you're supposed to trim that to fit. But I think what I'm gonna do is just swap the two around. Uh, looks like I have to bend their tabs just a little bit. And that way I have a complete one for a future project because I'm pretty sure this one will work. Got that adapter in place here. Um, then I just have to get this cable to it. And um, remember how this transmission and transfer case was way longer than the Jeep one? And the cable's like, eh, six inches short. So um, what I'm gonna do is extend it. Luckily, I hoard things, including old speedometer cables. And I've got this stubby one here. Uh, it's maybe a three footer or so, but uh, that'll give me plenty of extra length to connect. And then somehow I just have to hook the two cables together. Uh, we'll figure that part out next. So here's my adapter plan. As you can see, that's a little bit of eighth inch fuel line tubing left over from an outboard motor project. And I just slid it over the cable by spinning it, it spins the cable. So I'm gonna slide that tubing over the other cable and they might actually drive each other. Then it's just a matter of keeping the two in line. Back to the rubber tubing bin. Um, this one actually has two different sizes because I have a small and, wherever that one, here it is, and the larger style. I think I can shove this over both nuts, hose clamp it in place to keep everything in alignment. The inner tube will drive it and um, then we should have a speedometer. Will this work? I have no idea. It'll be a nice surprise when I start driving. We'll see whether or not the speedometer works. But if nothing else, it was free. So, uh, you know, that's good. It's always important for the finishing touches when you're completely hacking something. We're getting all kinds of fancy here. Uh, I've got the suspension actually bolted on with the nuts tightened down. I'm even gonna add the front sway bar. Uh, it goes around here somewhere. Let's see if we sneak that up in there. But this thing should handle like a sports car pretty soon. Or at least, you know, be able to stay on the road and go in a straight line. There we go. Oh, that's running terrible. Nope. Not making it out of the driveway. Well then, we made it to the gate. And that's it. Uh, let's try to figure out what's wrong with it now. Put a couple more gallons of gas in the tank. Um, got about a half a tank now, so I don't think that was really it, but it's running again. Well, we're going. Hey, check this out. Yeah, we stalled again. 
at this point it starts up and dies within a you know a few hundred feet. So I'm thinking when I added the fuel tank in, I'm back to the original tank, cleared out all those mud wasps out of the lines. I'm betting there's some residue there and it's probably clogging up the filters. So we're gonna pop those off. There's one here, there's one there, and uh, check and see what we got. Hopefully it's just a clogged filter. I can put a new one in and we're good to go. If not, I gotta do real diagnostic work. I don't wanna do that. It's too nice of a day out. Here's the carb filter. Uh, that one's totally dry, so that could be an issue. Oh, hey, we got chunks. So that's all stuff that came out of the filter here. That's uh, promising, but the filter seems clear. Well, there's a big pile of mud in the bottom of it. Maybe I should change this one. Uh, you know, the mud and all. Got a new fuel filter installed. I'm gonna crank it over with the ignition off to just see how it flows. a while for the pump to actually start pumping. I think I gotta, I think the pump's picking up air. Yeah, that or the fuel pump went bad on me. I'm thinking it's pulling air in along with the fuel. So I think the pickup line is the issue. I've got a line coming straight off the pump and uh, the carb's full of gas, so it should run for a few seconds. We're gonna see how that fuel pump pumps without being restricted by a carb and see if it looks like we're sucking air or if we're pumping properly. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, I feel fuel coming through. There we go. That, that looks minimal. I think we have a fuel supply issue. Now I filled up the bowl again. This time I'm running from this tank, which I know worked before. We're gonna see what we get out of here. There we go. That's the pulses of a fuel pump. So the problem is, we're pulling air in somewhere. That might be a bad tank I've got. So uh, we're gonna bypass it and go back to this boat tank. Now that looks a whole lot better. Um, these are still using a boat tank. The problem is somewhere in the pickup of the original tank, um, which is now full of gas. So I've gotta figure out how to pull that out without emptying it. So let's get back to business here. Let's try this again. Let's see how badly it goes this time.
don't know if you can see it there, but there's light dust on the same spot I rubbed before and it keeps showing up. So that's not all the way gone. But the question is, no, it still won't rub off. Yeah, that's just doesn't come clean easy. All right, I'm giving up on this paint. Um, I don't know if I'll ever get it clean again. So I'm going to work with that and I'm gonna fix the four-wheel drive next and drive it off-road all the time so it stays dirty. Taking out the desert was fun, I just need more traction. So I gotta get that front drive shaft in so the front axle's driving. Um, but I had a good time anyway, and uh, we're just gonna ignore this whole non-shiny thing. It'll fit better with everything else anyway, and we'll just keep moving on. So uh, you guys have fun, and I will too. We'll see you next time.